What's going on everybody? Broken Games HDR back at it again with another video. In this video, going to be reviewing episode 7 of The Last of Us. So this is definitely going to be my shortest review so far of this series because there's not that much to say about um, this episode. It was a very exposition heavy, well the, the whole episode is technically an exposition, diving into the background of Ellie when she was at Fedger School and um, how, she met, how she met Riley. Well, yeah, Ellie, well, Riley is her best friend by this point. But giving you some information and exposition on Riley, her origin, and just their relationship and everything when they were at Fedger School and, and, and Riley becoming a firefly and all that stuff. So giving you, um, you know, a lot of foundational uh, narrative and, and, and information. So before I get into the review, I don't want to harp on once again saying that the show feels rushed, right? I still feel that way. Everybody knows I feel that way. I think a lot of people have, have kind of accepted that. Um, I will admit that if, if I was somebody who didn't play the game, I probably wouldn't feel like that. I admit that because when I, I have gotten like the, um, the impression from people who have never played the game and what they think about it, they don't think it's rushed at all. Rushed is not even something that's even coming to their mind. They think this show is, you know, just paced perfectly, damn near. Right. So, yes, it is something that we feel or I feel because I played the game. Uh, people outside who, d who haven't played the game don't feel that way, typically. Um, but but I can't help but to feel like the show is almost structured like video game levels, which is ironic because when you play the game, the game doesn't feel like like you're going from level to level. Really, it feels like you're traveling on one long journey. but. This this show ironically feels like the old school structure of video games when you go from this level to this level to this level. That's how the that's how the episodes are structured. It's almost like the almost like the Mortal Kombat Tower, right? Okay, it, each episode it's like okay, you go here in this episode and you meet this person. Then this episode is this person. This episode is this person. And typically, that's the end of like that person you ran into. In the previous episode, that like that's it. There's some reoccurring cast in some of these episodes, but typically they're just one offs. And it, it so it makes the show almost feel like a boss rush game, damn near. Not that there's like an enemy or a boss in each episode, but that's kind of how it feels like. It, it just feels structured like an old school video game. Um, but anyway, um, episode starts off Ellie at Fedra School, you know, in the gym and everything in the gym and you know some um some taller chick is picking on her but uh, you know Ellie ain't no bitch so um she doesn't back down and everything like that um she's the, the girl says some stuff about about Riley and Ellie's worried Riley might be dead because she's been gone for 3 weeks so Ellie punches that broad right in the face gives her 15 stitches right so that's them at you know at Fedra school um the game you know talks a, a decent amount about Fedra school this is the first time we've seen you know seen it of, of, of course, um, Ellie gets in trouble, gets sent to the captain's office. And, you know, he's just kind of giving her an ultimatum. Like, listen, you got th this is this is the only real thing there. There's very limited choices in this world now. So uh, becoming a federal officers, that's kind of one of the things that that uh, the children typically do. They tr they train to become federal officers and learn how to kill fireflies and uh, learn, learn their duties and everything. And they get assigned, they get assigned duties. Um, so that night, uh, after Ellie punches this chick in the face and gets in, in trouble and everything like that, gets this little pep talk from the captain, Riley sneaks into her room, um, covers her mouth because she thinks it's some funny prank. I don't know. If, I don't know if that's a good idea to do to somebody, uh, um, you know, during this type of, uh, environment, but you know, she thinks it's a, it's a joke. And, um, so Ellie is, what uh 14 and riley is 17 in in this show i believe and in um in the game riley is 16 and elliot is is 14 am i getting i feel like i i think i got that right i i think i got that right um it still feels um for some reason i i feel like that's wrong but i i know it's right but I, i'll i'll double check it at the end but anyway um, so yeah, they're supposed to be like two, three years apart. Um, and Riley lets Ellie know, like, hey, um, you know, she joined the Fireflies, and 
there's this like uh, this dynamic between them throughout the whole episode because even though Ellie doesn't necessarily like Fedra, she doesn't like hate them either, and she's technically training to become part of Fedra, and um, and and to learn how to like defend the QZ and and kill fireflies and. Her best friend is Riley, someone who is rebelling against Fedra and wanted and has joined the Fireflies. But that doesn't necessarily, well, it, it, at some points of this episode, it does come between them because they see it, you know, kind of kind of differently because they're, you know, they're going they're on diverted paths and everything and everything uh, that, that comes with being a federal officer or or a Firefly while also being um, while also being best friends. Um, so Riley takes her, you know, out of, uh, you know, uh, they sneak out. Um, they come across the body of a guy who decided to take the easy way out and, and mix pills with alcohol because he, you know, he don't want no parts of this world no more. So and it's some uh, authentic alcohol, apparently, which is not uh, easy to um, come across, uh, you know, anymore. Mo most, most of the time it's it's uh, it's stepped on watered down or, uh, you know, moonshine. Um, alcohol that people have been that people been making really talks to ellie about why she wanted to become a firefly and how she uh ended up running into marlene and marlene recruited her and all that uh you know so we get all that information also um a lot of this uh episode obvi obviously this is from the left behind dlc and the american dream um last of us comic touches on a lot of this stuff too so and those comics are like posted on youtube you don't got to buy them or nothing i recommend uh, just go checking them out on, on YouTube. Um, it gives a little bit more information on on this, um, you know, on, on Ellie and, and Riley and Marlene and all that stuff. Uh, but they go to the mall, you know, they power, they, uh, it's powered up. And this is what Riley wanted to do for Ellie, essentially. Just wanted her to have one final night out um, and just have a whole lot of fun because they're deprived of a lot of experiences that, children usually have which is why like ellie sees the escalator and she thinks that's one of the attractions damn near she's like her mind is blown just by the escalator um working and that wasn't that's not even like one of the things obviously that riley took her to the mall uh to do um the five wonders as they call it throughout the episode the five wonders ended up being um the escalator she did count that the merry-go-round eddie eddie rogers arcade Shout out to Eddie Raja, you know, uh, one of the best characters from Uncharted. I'm mad they killed him off in, in, in Uncharted Drake's Fortune. Um, I always held that hope Eddie was alive, by the way. That's a sidebar. But I always wished he, he, was, he was alive and he would actually, um, he didn't, you know, we didn't actually see him die. And if, I'm going on a tangent here, but I, if, I want Eddie Raja to be alive. I'm just saying, like, I don't know. It, it, I just feel like, yo, listen, we didn't actually see his death technically so what if like you know this rumored uncharted game he would be an old man by that time but that would be cool to see eddie come back somehow anyway um riley talks about how you know she was g gonna get assigned sewage detail you know when she finally turned um you know 17 and she became of age uh you know at, at fedra school um ellie had Ellie was a better prospect, you know, the captain told Ellie, you know, he, he would act, she could actually become, you know, one of the lead officers and, and damn near be in charge. Uh, so obviously Ellie um, had a better future, you know, in Fedra than, than Riley. Riley was going to be subjected to just sewage detail and that's not any way she wants to live also. So that I'm sure that also encouraged her to become, uh, to, you know, to pursue becoming a, a firefly. Uh, so they have fun with the escalator, right? Then the merry-go-round, they spend some, spend some time there, you know, talking and bonding and catching up. And then, uh, Eddie Rogers arcade where they play, you know, some Mortal Kombat. Uh, you know, we got a Mortal Kombat 2 reference and we saw the arcade machine in another episode. And during this, this time when they're playing the Mortal Kombat 2 and, um, pulling off fatalities and all this stuff. Uh, it was pretty, you know, pretty cool to see that in this show. Um, that's when they awaken the stalker. So it's actually pretty hard to like, I think one of the 
ways that me personally that I that I identified stalkers in the game was by their movement. Stalkers moved in a very certain way. Like they're they're very skittish, they're very shy. They don't attack you head on. They hide, you know, around door corners. They, you know, they and and I guess he he technically did a little bit of that before he attacked them where he was hiding behind um he was hiding behind uh, like some clothes or something like that. But you don't I'm not really getting the stalker-ish behavior, the same type of behavior that we get from the show. Uh, essentially, the stalkers just act like runners just further evolved, right? That, that's kind of how they act. So, you know, I, I feel like they could have um, did a better job just portraying the unique behavior and um, characteristics of a, of a stalker, you know. But, yeah, this was, um, this was, this was definitely a stalker. Um, and the fifth, the fourth wonder was the pun book, which by the way, they made a cannibal joke, which I think is a reference, you know, to the next episode, because the next episode is when they, uh, when Ellie obviously runs into David and his group of cannibals. So that's definitely not a coincidence. That's on, that's on purpose. And then the last thing was the, uh, was the costume, was the costume shop, but going back to the, uh, to the pun book, um, when Riley shows Ellie the pun book in that same room. Uh, Ellie also sees the pipe bombs that uh, obviously the uh, the fireflies have been storing, and um, uh, they've been making uh, Riley put those together for them because you know she's she didn't tell Ellie that part where she's obviously stockpiling uh, and getting ready bombs for uh, for for the um, for the fireflies to use. So Ellie gets a little bit upset at that. Um, and, you know, storms out, but she, you know, she comes back and all that good stuff. And, um, I have my, my notes a little bit out of order, but Riley does tell, uh, Ellie that she is leaving the Boston QZ, uh, at, at, at some point. Um, and fast forward a little bit, Riley, uh, is joining the Fireflies because, you know, she also wants a sense of family that she lost. She was young when she lost her parents. But she does uh, want that sense of family. And, you know, she feels like the Fireflies chose her um, more for her skills. But, you know, she's young and a little bit naive. So she still she still accepts that as them as them choosing her. Uh, so they start dancing, you know, on top of that counter in, in the costume shop with the mask on. You know, the kiss happens. Uh, you know, Ellie has they obviously have a crush on each other. We know that. Um, and then the stalker, they say they hear some noise and it's the stalker near them. The stalker starts, starts to chase them. They both get bit as we know. And then there's the flashback to Joel and Ellie. And, you know, Ellie is thinking back to this moment and she realizes and decides she's definitely not going to abandon Joel. Uh, flash and the flashbacks to Ellie, uh, to the, to the mall, Ellie and Riley in the mall and Ellie breaking everything. Even though I've been very critical of Bella Ramsey and her performance in in uh, comparison to the game, I think that you know she really hasn't uh, done most of the scenes from the game better or just as well as the game. But I think this scene, the way when she reacts to seeing herself get bit, when she realizes she she gets bit, that moment of denial, I think that's better than how it was in the game, and. The way she's breaking everything with the bat, that's just as good as it is in the game or better. So I give credit where credit do, credit's due. The, that scene was great when she gets, when she realized she's bitten, when she's breaking everything. She did a great job at just channeling what you would actually feel if you realize, yeah, it's about to be over for me. We're, we're about to die. Um, or turn, rather. Um, so... Yeah, so now, you know, they, they've accepted that they're going to die because obviously Ellie doesn't know if she's uh, immune or anything like that. It flashes back to, um, well, before that, you know, they talk about their options. They could either kill, them, kill themselves. She, well, Riley says they have three options. They could either kill themselves, uh, just keep going and um, take advantage of the time they have. That was the second choice. And I didn't understand this part. Maybe somebody could explain it to me. Ellie asks her what's the third option and she doesn't really 
give one. I, d- I didn't really understand what why what she was ex- exact exactly um, saying or referencing to as a third option. Maybe I missed some type of cue or something like that, or or didn't understand the body language. I don't know what the what the third option really was. But it flashes back to Ellie looking for something to help Joel out. She finds some 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 thread and uh, patches Joel uh, patches up Joel. Um, you know, his open puncture wound. And you could see this is a very pivotal moment, another pivotal moment of Ellie taking care of Joel, you know, when she's when he's been taking care of uh, her this whole time. And, you know, this this traumatic event is obviously, um, you know, lending to their relationship, getting stronger through the trauma. So that was pretty much the whole, you know, the, the whole uh, episode, essentially. I thought it was a, a good episode. It, it was solid. And, um, I, you know, I, at first, when I, when I, I watched it twice, when I first watched it, I was like, eh, that, that's okay. I, I actually liked it better the second time I watched it. So it was a pretty good episode. So episodes we got left, we have David and the Cannibals next episode. Uh, I'm not sure how long that one, that episode is. This episode was like 55, 60 minutes. Um, maybe next episode is about the same thing. And then the final episode, episode nine, is 41 minutes. And I'm just like, I don't know how that episode is or why that episode is 40 minutes. Yeah, like like I said, things are just escalating so fast. And it's the Mortal Kombat Tower. David is in the next episode. And that's going to be the end of David just that quick in that one, that one episode. So, uh, yeah. Uh, but yeah, solid episode. Let me know what y'all think. Hit the like button. Hit the notification bell. I think it's been it's been made yes very clear that this show the more and more we've gotten through each episode it is made more for people who haven't played the game i it, i feel like it started out as somewhat of a love letter to people who played the game but it's kind of veered off and this is for the the ca- the casuals who just stumbled upon this show it could be you know, it gives a little something to both, but I think it really caters to people who haven't played the game. And I guess that's okay. So those are my thoughts. Let me know what y'all think. I'll catch y'all on the next one. Peace.